This past Saturday, June the 4th, 2022, was the first NCA sanctioned tournament that we have seen in at least two and a half years. It was a very exciting day. The purpose of this video is just a quick recap to tell you how the day went down. We're gonna talk about how did it come together? Why did this NCA Players Championship happen? What was the Friday Night Social all about? Who won the custom NCA Coconut Board raffle prize? As well as how did the day, how did the day unfold? What were some of the highlights and where can you go to learn all the results of who kicked butt and uh, yeah let's get after it Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Crokinole Boards. So this NCA Players Championship is the first time it's happened. You may be wondering why. Well, it actually came from some bad news because sadly, this was the third consecutive year that the World Crokinole Championships did not happen. Uh, it was earlier this year, the committee made the decision. It was just too tight of a time frame to bring together an event of this magnitude. Well, a few of the top level NCA players got together and we went, mm -mm, it has been too long. We are not waiting to the fall to play competitive crokinole again let's make this happen so that's how it came together and a few of us so there was Claire Kipfer there was Jason Beerling Ray Beerling Andrew Hutchinson myself and last but definitely not least Nathan Walsh and you probably recognize that name from the amazing work that he does on the crokinole center YouTube channel putting up competitive footage as well as the work that he does behind the scenes with the world crokinole championship committee and the national crokinole association like the guy works tirelessly as an incredible ambassador for this great game. So over the last few months, uh, we got together as a committee and we worked away at bringing together the best possible event that we could. I think the day was a huge success. And the next thing we'll talk about is the Friday Night Social and why you may care about that. If you're looking to organize a Crokinole event, this isn't the be all and end all. This is just some of what we did on that Friday night, our motivation behind it and what the results were. So when Elaine and I made the decision to put together this Friday Night Social, we had a few motivations. One was that we just wanted to, we just wanted some extra time to connect with our friends that we haven't seen in such a long time because there's been such a gap in these uh, incredible crokinole experiences. The other motivation was that we know there's so many people who've taken up this game in the last two to three years who wanted to come and test their skills and their merit against uh, other competitive crokinole players. But for a lot of them, it was their first time coming to a competitive crokinole event, playing against strangers, were pretty strange, um, but definitely uh, for a lot of them their first time coming to a high level NCA tournament. So we thought just a Friday night social, a relaxed atmosphere, what a fantastic way for them to meet some of these players like Andrew Hutchinson and the Beerlings and these other, Justin Slater maybe, uh, these players that they're used to seeing on the big screen of the Crokinole Center YouTube channel, they would have the chance to sit down and play with them, play with them against them in just a completely casual setting and I definitely feel like we checked that box we saw a lot of people and the other motivation was there were people that were traveling from afar this was an extra opportunity for them to make more of a weekend of it the the other thing that we did and we just wanted to you know bring these people together we wanted to one create a challenge something different as well as use it as a, an opportunity to raise some funds for a really cool organization in our area we ran a number of challenges challenges throughout the night and if you want to learn more about these challenges I'll, I'll put a link down below because I basically I borrowed them from our YouTube channel the one challenge we did was the the drill that we call the outside in so uh, I'll put a link down below to that but basically everybody who wanted to challenge themselves in this they play they paid a dollar a big, big time money here a dollar up here in Canada we call it a loony uh, you, pay, you paid a buck to be able to have a turn at this and we would record your score well whoever had the best score at the end of the night won a Tracy Boards hat. And another challenge that we did was, uh, again, I'll put a link to this down below as well. It's a, It was a slight modification of the drill that we have on our YouTube channel called Pull the Button Back. But whoever was able to accomplish that drill in the least number of shots won a Tracy Boards shirt. 
it just so happened that uh, two players tied with the exact same number of shots so we had to have a high pressure tiebreaker and the third challenge we wanted to do something a little more beginner friendly so every time somebody wanted to play this they paid a dollar in order to get eight shots at an open 20 and with each one that they successfully sank they got one ticket into a draw actually I believe that one was for the shirt um, the other drill the pull the button back drill that one the winner got a four pack of the Crokinole Vienna lager uh, that uh, that I picked up at the US Open down in Voorheesville New York but with each one of these drills it was a dollar to challenge yourself so throughout the course of the evening we collected $75 and then Elaine and I decided we wanted to match that so the other day I made a donation to a local charity called House of Friendship they do amazing work in our area for the less fortunate so that was just something we did it's not something you have to do if you're running a coconut event but it was something we chose to do and, and all in all we feel it was a pretty successful and helping people feel more comfortable uh, having an opportunity to spend even more time connecting with some of our favorite people and we just so happened to raise a little bit of money for a great cause while we were doing it Now, I mentioned the committee, but again, we had uh, Andrew Hutchinson, Ray Beerling, Jason Beerling, Claire Kipfer, myself, and Nathan Walsh. We were all, you know, we put in a lot of time and effort to bring this great event together, but there were also some other people who stepped up and were instrumental in helping set up on Friday and absolutely helped keep the wheels turning nicely on the Saturday. And uh, some of those people were uh, Claire's wife, Kathy, came and helped us out. Uh, Connor Ryman, who had traveled in from the U.S., he was one of the five, I believe it was five players who traveled up from the U.S. He was there to help set up tables and boards. Um, we also had a, a gentleman, a great coconut player. He chose not to play. He just wanted to be there as a support person. A good friend of ours named Alex Protus. And then other people that I definitely can't forget to mention because they were huge help. Nathan's parents, Tom and Gloria Walsh, stepped up, helped on Friday, helped with the food on Saturday. They were there. They didn't even play in the tournament. They were there because they wanted to support Nathan as well as support the incredible coconut community. So all in all, these people came together and pulled off what I feel was just an absolutely incredible event. And as I mentioned, one of the one of the amazing things about this event was that the NCA, the National Crokinole Association, stepped up and they wanted to incentivize people to sign up early so that we could be as organized as we possibly could. So there was an early bird raffle prize of a custom NCA board. And... Uh, it just so happened that a longtime player and a fantastic guy who was super excited to win this board, a gentleman by the name of Rex, Rex Johnson was the lucky winner who walked away with this incredible crokinole board and uh, he held his own too. So I think all in all, Rex had a pretty darn good day at the NCAA Players Championship. Now the day itself, we saw, like I say, we saw players, uh, five players that uh, traveled up here from the US. They weren't all together. Three of them came together. The other two were individuals on their own. We saw two players here from Prince Edward Island, a player who had traveled over from Montreal, Quebec, as well as players from all over Ontario. I say lots of people we, we know very well in the competitive coconut scene, but lots of new faces. A new club by down near Windsor. There were players from there. There was actually a bachelor party. There were five five teams, I believe, of doubles that showed up from a bachelor party, all with matching shirts, and they they added their own flavor and flair to the day, and it was uh, pretty awesome the energy that they brought. And uh, throughout the day, we played doubles in the morning. We had our round robin and then our playoffs. You may be wondering how that went again. Nathan Walsh does an amazing job. I'll put a link down below to the NCA page where he posted all those results. Same thing in the afternoon when we played singles. There was a two round robins and then uh, elimination games to, to work our way down to a final crowned champion. Those results are also up there. And please be a little bit patient. It's going to take some time. There were a lot of cameras rolling and uh, there's going to be a lot of coconut footage and commentary coming your way in the weeks and months months to come and that'll help tide us over until the next crokinole event and if you're wondering if you're sitting there sour that you missed out there are events coming so check out the nca page
stage. The next one that I know of, uh, NCA sanctioned event that I know of will be coming up in September in Belleville. So uh, that, that pr should prove to be another amazing day. So for now, that was just a recap of what an amazing day that we had. Um, hopefully you, you gained some excitement, maybe garnered some ideas of what you can do. And uh, if, if you'd like to brainstorm uh, about how to make an event like this successful in your area, we're here as a resource, happy to connect. Uh, uh, just scheduled a call with a, a new friend from Scotland. Him and I are gonna connect on Monday to talk about the event that he's promoting. Um, I talked with and uh, a little bit with Ian Witt over in the UK. They ran a tournament uh, the same day we did. The, the UK Championship on June the 4th took place. And if you check out our YouTube channel, uh, they were kind enough to do the commentary and allow us the honor of putting that up on our page. So things are really hopping and popping and booming in the Crokinole universe. Lots more coming your way. With that, I'll wrap this up. And I really hope you've enjoyed this uh, recap that probably isn't so short at this point as I chattered about the greatest game on earth. Make it a great day.